Welcome to this introduction to the application of failure modes and effects analysis in an acute healthcare setting. FMEA is a well-established reliability technique used widely in aerospace, nuclear and other high-risk industries. The aim of this podcast is to provide an understanding of the context and purpose of healthcare FMEA, steps for a successful healthcare FMEA process, and how FMEA can help you to improve safety culture in your team for both patients and staff. In recent years, FMEA has become part of the Six Sigma toolkit advocated by the IHI and NHS Institute for quality improvement in healthcare, with an emphasis on reducing variation, improving productivity and reducing waste and costs. Other QI techniques in the Six Sigma toolkit, for example the 80-20 Pareto principle, can sometimes overlook smaller, more frequent events that have a large cumulative effect for safety. FMEA combines quantitative and qualitative elements and is one of the best ways to analyse potential reliability problems as well as risks early in development of a new process. Different types of FMEA are used in different settings and FMEA is also a powerful tool to improve safety for existing processes. As a general rule, FMEA should always be done whenever failures could result in potential harm or injury. The method that we have adapted here at Nottingham shows that use of FMEA in the acute medical setting can also form the basis of an improving safety culture. Historically, healthcare has used root cause analysis following adverse events, with an added focus on safety and error reduction, however, a more prospective approach is now required. The benefits of FMEA include examining the entire process, not just focusing on events, using a logical, structured and prospective approach to the analysis capturing collective knowledge of the team or wider teams, rapidly identifying and ranking areas of concern. FMEA improves quality, reliability and safety. It can reduce process development risks and cost. Most importantly, it can identify false economies and track risk reduction activities. The application of FMEA in healthcare can provide systematic, prospective identification of where a process can go wrong. It can build a shared understanding within the multidisciplinary team of risks to patients among different groups and professions. It can reveal risks and tensions known to different groups. It can reveal tensions between the need for standardisation and creative variability in everyday practice. It achieves a consensus view to prioritise, rank and analyse risks. It contributes to identifying root causes and to stratify risks for improvement at personal, ward, divisional and organisational levels. And these steps form a robust basis for improving safety culture. During a Health Foundation project in Nottingham, which began in 2011, we tested the safer clinical systems approach to making prescribing safer on an acute medical ward. The aim was to improve understanding of the hazards in this high-risk clinical environment, to raise staff awareness of the dangers inherent in prescribing, to develop systematic procedures to implement safer prescribing processes, to focus on the patient's prescribing journey, beginning with an unscheduled admission, through to transfer home or to a medical ward. It also aimed to work with the acute medicine service to focus on a number of key safety areas. These were reliable processes, in particular medication histories and prescriptions being complete and free from errors, safety awareness that staff understand the risks involved in dealing with medication and report incidences of harm, 
and communication at admission, ward transfer and discharge. Prescribing risks identified by FMEA work during this project included the number of patients taking their own medication before they had been clerked, which was well known to the nurses, but not so well known to the medical staff. Failure to inform nurses of changes to drug charts and pressures to move patients. These are risks which would not be revealed so easily in other forms of analysis. For an FMEA exercise to be meaningful, it is often essential to convene a multidisciplinary group with all grades and types of staff involved so that the process can be fully examined from all viewpoints. Participants must be assured that every voice counts and that no blame or punishment will ensue as a result of free and frank discussion. These are the Chatham House rules. People must be encouraged to speak up and challenge, but most importantly, listen and learn from each other. Some risks may be obvious to certain groups, but hidden from others. Skilled facilitation is required to achieve the necessary consensus for risk scoring within the time available. Failure modes and effect analysis requires an initial process map with a maximum of five steps with clear boundaries. This can take time and consensus here is important to ensure that the rest of the process is worthwhile. Depending on the time available, the group then agrees on the most risky step or steps and identifies what can go wrong for each step with a focus on what actually happens, which is sometimes termed work as done out-of-hours variation may also need to be considered here. Failure modes, what can go wrong, are then identified for each chosen step. Alternatively, steps can be prioritised according to the time available and a different group is sometimes convened to address other steps in the process at a later date. Each failure mode is then given a risk score. We found the following scoring method to be the most helpful because it also considers the possibility of detection and recovery from the risk. The maximum risk score that can be generated is 81, which would include a high consequence, scoring three, a high risk of occurrence, scoring three, a low risk of detection, three, and a low risk of recovery. For each high-risk step, the group will then identify causes, identify existing control measures and consider human factors that influence the risk. They will then agree on interventions using an options appraisal. The options appraisal considers whether each identified hazard involves a sufficient likelihood of occurrence and severity to warrant that it is controlled without waiting for an event to occur. Interventions can then be used to redesign the process with a later review and further appraisal. Using the human factors headings as a guide, it may be possible to identify solutions at individual, task or team levels. Other risks may need to be escalated to organisational level. If all identified risks are scored, they can then be further stratified by risk prioritisation number or RPN. The human factors headings traditionally used in FMEA are patient, task or technical, individual or staff, team, work or environment, organisational or management and institutional. FMEA facilitates learning from events that are frequent rather than severe. The accumulated effects of many small events can be larger than one big event. It may even be easier and more effective to make improvements around these smaller events for a bigger impact on safety. As with all improvement work, the emphasis is on making it easier to do the right thing. Integrating standards and guidelines into everyday work is not always straightforward. Looking at the whole system not just incident analysis, allows identification of work as done. 
practitioners often need to adjust what they do, which may involve bending the rules. Habitual adjustments and performance variability may be necessary to get the job done in a pressured environment where supplies and equipment may not be available, especially out of hours. Performance variability is also the reason why errors occur. This is why FMEA can be such a useful tool. Human error is considered as a consequence and not a cause. Use of FMEA in this way can help to strengthen the team environment and contribute to building a strong safety culture. In a healthy safety culture, it is however important to remain sensitive to the possibility of future failure and avoid becoming complacent.